It's a warm summer's day on Sunday, the 22nd of June of 1941. Operation Barbarossa has just begun. In the two years leading up to the invasion, Germany and the Soviet Union signed a political and economic pact for strategic purposes. Nevertheless, the German High Command began planning an invasion of the Soviet Union in July of 1940 under the codename Operation Otto, which Adolf Hitler authorized on December 18th of 1940. For the campaign against the Soviet Union, the Germans allotted almost 150 divisions containing about 3 million men. Among those units were 19 panzer divisions, and in total the Barbarossa force had about 3,000 tanks, 7,000 artillery pieces and 2,500 aircraft. It was in effect the largest and most powerful invasion force in human history. The German strength was further increased by more than 30 divisions from Romania, Finland, Italy, Slovakia, Hungary and Croatia. Back in the east, Maria Vasilevna Oktybriskaya was born into a poor Ukrainian family on the Crimean Peninsula. She was one of ten children before the Great Patriotic War, the Soviet's name for the Eastern Front of the Second World War. She worked in a cannery and then she was a telephone operator. In 1925 she married a Soviet army officer. While married to her husband she began to acquire interest in military matters she became involved in the military wives council and she was trained as a nurse in the army. She also learned how to use weapons and drive vehicles, she said. Marry a serviceman, you serve in the army. As an officer's wife, is not only a proud woman, but also a responsible one. When the Western Front of World War II opened, Maria was evacuated to Tomsk in Siberia. While living in Tom, she learned that her husband has been killed fighting the German forces near Kiev in August of 1941. The news took almost two years to reach her. The news angered her deeply, and she became determined to fight the Germans in revenge for her husband's death. She sold all her possessions to donate for a Red Army tank. She requested that the tank be named Fighting Girlfriend, and she was allowed to drive it. The State Defense Committee agreed to this. The tank Maria donated was a T-34 medium tank. By this time, she was 38 years old. She took part in a five-month training program immediately after the donation. The five months of training was unusual for tank crews at the time, Usually tank crews were rushed straight to the front line with minimal training. After completing her training, she was posted on the 26th Guard Tank Brigade of the 2nd Guard Tank Corps in September of 1943 as a driver and mechanic. She named her tank Fighting Girlfriend and embezzled these words on the turret of the T-34. Many of her fellow tankers saw her as a publicity stunt and a joke, but this attitude changed when Maria began fighting in the first tank battles near Smolensk. She will soon see action. Her first battle began on October the 21st of 1943. It involved Maria maneuvering her tank in intense fighting as she and her fellow tank crew members destroyed machine gun nests and artillery guns. When her tank was hit by gunfire, she would disregard orders, would leap out of her tank and repair the tank even though she was heavy under fire. For her bravery in the battle, she was promoted to the rank of sergeant. A month later, on the 17th and 18th of November, the Soviet forces captured the town of Novoye Selo during a night battle. During this attack, Maria enlarged her reputation as a skilled tank driver. On the 17th, she took part in an assault on the German positions near Novoye Selo. However, a German artillery shell exploded against her tr tank tracks, halting her advance. Maria and her fellow crewmen jumped out to repair the track while the other crew members gave covering fire from the tank's turret. Eventually, they fixed the tank track and her tank rejoined the main unit after several days. Two months later, on the 17th of January of 1944, Maria fought in another night attack as part of the Leningrad Novorogod offensive. The battle would prove to be her last. The attack took place at the village of Shvedi, 
During the battle, she drove her T-34 about the German defences and destroyed resistance in trenches and machine gun nests. Her tank crew also destroyed a German self-propelled gun. The tank was hit by a German anti-tank shell again in the tracks and she was immobilised. Maria got out of the tank immediately and began repair on the track. Amid fierce small arms and artillery fire, she managed to repair the track but she was hit in the head by a shell fragment and lost consciousness. After the battle, she was transported to a Soviet military field hospital at Fastov. She remained at the military field hospital for just over two months before finally passing on the 15th of March. The following August, she was post-mortemly made a hero of the Soviet Union in recognition of her bravery in the battles around Vidbesk. Well, what can you say about this woman? Just badass, that's kind of the, the only thing that I could probably think of right now, but if World War, III, the World War III does break out, I would hope that my wife sells everything and she buys a tank, although tanks are not going to be that cheap these days, but still... It just goes to show that she was just badass, that woman. So, I hope you've enjoyed the story. It's something that not everybody's heard about because you don't really see a lot of these stories when it comes to documentaries and things like that. They always tend to cover sort of bigger, broader sort of areas. But never these little stories which make like a huge difference to me anyway. So, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you'd like to hear more of these stories in, in the future, do let me know. If you hear some of them yourself that you might me to... You want me to do some research on go ahead and leave me some comments down below hopefully you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one